All right, my hot take. Um, basically, everybody can stop apologizing for their bad handwriting. Like, that's the, probably the number one thing that I hear from people who are into fountain pens or not into fountain pens. Whenever I talk to anybody, family members, strangers, anybody, people online, when they know that I'm into pens or especially that I, you know, I'm a YouTuber and have a career in fountain pens, they immediately feel like they need to disclaim to me how terrible their handwriting is and apologize for it and not like have me offended by it. And I'm like, it's really okay. Like pretty much everybody has terrible handwriting right now. And what does that matter anyway? So, I mean, clearly there's like, shame around having bad handwriting, especially in the US. And there's a reason for that. So I'm gonna educate a little bit as well as, you know, talk about my position. Um, so a lot of this goes back to Platt Rogers Spencer, Zaner Bloser, Palmer, some of the early like drivers of handwriting script in the Americas in the 1800s, early 1900s. There was a very strong kind of push maybe like leftover from some kind of like the puritanical type movement that was, you know, had this vibe of like good handwriting being related to, you know, discipline and personal character, education, even like spirituality, you know, related. And, and it was pretty much like you do practice drills and you have to sit in this entirely proper manner. And there's good concepts and methodology behind that related to your muscles and how to write you know, properly for when you are writing for long periods of time in script that is easily readable as well as is good for your body form, you know, because at the time that those were created, they didn't have, you know, I mean, they had printing presses, but they weren't always available for the average person. Type Typewriters hadn't been invented yet. So for the average person, you were writing with either a dip pen or eventually a fountain pen, and you were writing a lot. So to write with proper form was actually like a health thing. Um, so you needed to learn how hmm. to write well, because if you didn't write well, your hand would cramp and you would end up with all these muscle issues. So that was part of it, but it got kind of idealized into a more ethereal concept. And I think what happened is as the typewriter came out, as the ballpoint pen came out, some of the romanticism and ideology of that handwriting and being tied to like, personal character and education and like being a good person in general, you know, just like, you know, when you were kids in school in the early 1900s, like you had to have your shoes shined and wear your knickers above your, below your knees or whatever the heck, you know, was the fashion of the time. Like that was all related to, you know, are you being a good citizen or a good person or whatever? And so that all got kind of wrapped into there. And I think that just carried longer than it probably needed to hmm. into like the 60s, 70s, even 80s when Drew, when we were in school, you know, we, we, we were taught cursive handwriting in school sort of, but like in third grade. And then it was like sort of important. Yeah, you don't really have to use this anymore. It was not really emphasized that much. And even to today, I see, you know, like a little bit of shaming going on online, which is really kind of sad for like younger people not being taught cursive. And while I agree, like cursive is an interesting thing and I like it and support it, but like my kids, are, they didn't learn cursive in school. I'm trying to teach them at home and not doing a great job of it. And while that is... You could shame me for that because I'm in the pen business. At the same time, it's like they're learning coding in school. And like then learning code is way more important than them learning cursive for like their future life, arguably, right? If I could if like I could choose one, I would scale. yeah, I would I would give up my ability to learn to know <laughs> cursive for the ability to know code. Right. So I think it's all a matter of practicality. I think that yes, any discipline, anything you apply yourself to, you know, is gonna pay off in terms of your personal character and stuff like that. So while I don't think it's like the opposite of that, I, I think we can all just calm down a little bit and really just like be easier on ourselves. Like if you don't have what you feel is great handwriting, that's okay. If you enjoy writing with pens, just write with them and enjoy the heck out of them. And you know what? If you enjoy it and don't judge yourself about it, you're probably gonna wanna write with them more and then your handwriting will get better just because you're using them more. Right? It's just like if you're trying to exercise or diet or whatever, if all you're doing is like shaming yourself about it, guess what? You're probably more likely to fail. So if you just take it easy, just be honest with yourself about where you're at, where your skills are at, and just enjoy the journey and the process, you're gonna achieve probably a better end result over time. And then you'll be a better example for others and it can just be a more positive all around experience. I think we can all just let go the shame around handwriting. And uh, that's, that's my hot take on the matter, Drew. 
I like that. We might need to change it to uh, from hot take to you know GPS, the Goulet Pen Soapbox or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that.